origin reading for service to others. I have three crystals here. All right, so I'm gonna surround this in some protective space with my rose quartz here. Okay, um, so there's definitely some connections coming up already. I'm going to go over my crystals here, though, so that I don't forget <laughs> to talk about the crystals that I drew. So like I said, I have three crystals here. Um, so rose quartz is a heart chakra stone. I actually feel like this would be good for you to have. It would be good for you to have uh, like a small rose quartz that maybe you can wear. Uh, like maybe you can wear it as a necklace or a bracelet or something. Um, this is a really soothing energy. Uh, it's very comforting. It's very healing. There's a lot of um, different positive emotions that this crystal uh, resonates with and helps with because of the the chakra that it's associated with. So comfort, joy, love, compassion, healing. And it also helps with relationships as well and positive communication in different relationships. Um, then I have here my, cit my citrine. So this is a solar plexus stone. This is all about stepping into your personal power. Okay, um, ambition and sort of um, actions that you're taking and where you kind of view yourself in the world. And then speaking of the way that you're viewing yourself. So then I have my lapis lazuli here. So this is both a third eye stone and it's also a throat chakra stone. So your throat has to do with will, um, it has to do with your self-expression. It also has to do with the way that you see yourself. Um, because obviously the way that you see yourself and view yourself is going to definitely reflect in the way that you express yourself outwardly, which is what the throat chakra is all about. And then also there's, like I said, third eye energies with this as well. So again, uh, knowing yourself um, so the third eye, it's not only about psychic abilities, it's also just in general your, your perception. Um, so this stone also brings a lot of insight in general. Uh, it helps with things like path. Like if, you're, if your throat chakra is clear, then you tend to know what you want. You tend to know what you want in your life um, and things tend to manifest more easily for you when it comes to attracting those things. Um, but the third eye has to do with some of that as well, like knowing what your destiny or purpose or life path is. So just to let you know some of the chakras even that are associated with some of these questions. No, your guides are also sending me a, an energy about the crown chakra too. So as the crown chakra opens up this, brings us more into our spiritual connections. So um, in terms of 
like origin and even things like psychic abilities, although third eye is obviously associated with that as well. Um, your crown chakra connects you sort of to a higher purpose in life and your guides or even higher aspects of yourself and kind of more like your spiritual nature and your calling in life when it comes to your purpose in a, in a higher sense. Whereas the the third eye can help with that as well, but it's it also kind of offers more general insight into kind of whatever you're looking at or whatever you're questioning. There's a definitely a feeling with chakras here that your guides are sending, um, and then wanting you to. Um, work more with your chakras think more about which ones are clear um, which ones are active and operating or which ones might be more blocked so some of this would have to do with just researching it a little bit you can look online and you can see yeah, even even on YouTube some of the different chants for chakras sometimes they'll have something um, in like in the front of the video even though the video is is a chant or it's just like frequencies that resonate with a specific chakra sometimes they'll have something in the front that just talks about what the chakra is for um so there's even videos sometimes that explain some of those things or again just googling it um there's bound to be sites that'll come up that can tell you what different chakras are for, um, what you might experience if some chakras are blocked versus if they're open and they're working or, or if they aren't working. Okay, so now moving into some of these connections. So there is definitely... Uh, a Syrian connection that's pretty prominent with you as well. This might be part of the reason <laughs> that you and your daughter get along so well also because um, you have had some similar past life um, experiences as far as some of the places that you've gone to. There's an energy of, of Lyra here as well, definitely not as an origin, um, but that does come up as well. Um, so Lyrans are typically, um, referred to as cat people. They tend to come in with more of a kind of feline type of resonance versus Syrians. Um, okay. Well, there's a couple of races that come in with Syrians when I when I do a reading, but with you, I, I do feel this connection with water for sure. Um, and so this this would definitely be the Syrian race that's connected to water. But I do feel a connection to uh, the second race with Sirius that comes through during some of my readings, although I had never heard of this race before. Um, and then actually somebody did tell me about this race, but they didn't even realize that the race was from Sirius, but they had kept coming in during my readings um, as a Syrian race, but they're always coming in looking kind of like, um, kind of like owls or birds. Um, and they're kind of like a few feet tall, but at the same time, um, they walk, they have intelligence, um, so they're humanoid in that sense, even though their bodies are not very humanoid, but they're very, very tall for a bird anyway. They're very, very tall. Um, so that would be the second race that tends to come in with, with Sirius, and I do feel that with you as well to a, a lower degree. I definitely feel the, the water as, as more prominent. There's definitely a connection with that. Um, and there's definitely some kind of dolphin whale types of, of energies around you as well. And again, a little bit of this lyran or, or cat energy is there as well. Now, the other connection there that keeps coming up would be Arcturus. 
So with the Arcturians, you tend to have a lot of healing energies that come in. And people from there tend to uh, have a lot of natural healing and teaching abilities. And obviously, you can heal in a myriad of different ways. So this can come out in different ways. Um, however, there does tend to be a, a, typically a, a spiritual type of, of energy with them. Um, a lot of them do tie their... Um, their careers and things like that into a more kind of spiritual type of, of thing. Or that in some way comes to play. Typically with their careers, obviously, there's bound to be exceptions. But I'm saying kind of typically. There's definitely some energies with that as well. Um, and... I don't really know that that's an origin. However, I, I'm not sure, but however, I do feel like that's very important in particular to bring up. Because I feel like whatever you're going to be doing is going to be a little bit more geared in that direction. I feel like you're opening up a little bit more. I feel like you're going to be more satisfied if somehow. Um, the spiritual side of yourself, the spiritual knowledge that you have, whether it's, whether it's like, I mean, I feel like some of it is just innate, even if you don't necessarily know a whole lot of, of spiritual things. Um, maybe you do, maybe you don't. But the point is, I feel like some of it is just like within yourself, obviously, because you've had past lifetimes in other places where that way of thinking was more allowed and more expressed. Uh, but it really does feel like this is going to start tying in now with whatever you're meant to be doing. And I feel like that would be even where some of the confusion comes up for you because that would be something pretty new for you. Um, even though you have this name service to others, and even though that was something that was already coming out, like your guides are talking about how oh, that's that's natural for you, um, that was already coming out. But at the same time, um, well, there's also an energy of you giving to to yourself. Um, and service to, to yourself as well and what's going to fulfill you. Even though you were doing that before, at the same time, it didn't fully um, fulfill you in some ways, it feels like. And I, I do feel like part of that is actually because of this spiritual side. Um, so... Even though you had the general idea of your gift and the calling that you have, and it is like in service to others, you feel naturally the best when you're doing something in a type of field um, where you're inspiring others, where you're helping others. whether they have disabilities or this could be something else. Because it sounded from what you were describing or from what your daughter was describing after the first reading, it sounded like you were saying um, you have had that type of career, but it almost sounded more like physical or people who were disabled in some way. Um, but this still feels like more more spiritual. And it feels like you can bring healing to people um, in a variety of ways. Maybe even people who are more spiritual themselves um, or who, who think of themselves, in other words, more that way and are more open to those types of materials um, or, or those types of things being presented to them in the way of healing. Um, so whatever you're going to be doing, it feels kind of alternative and in some ways it feels like it's especially for yourself you don't have to be making a lot of money with it 
And that doesn't mean that you won't end up making sufficient money with it. Um, but the point is, it doesn't have to be like some high income thing. It's more about fulfilling yourself. Um, because they're saying that you could have something that is um, really fulfilling and paying a little bit less. Or you could have something that's paying you a lot more and isn't fulfilling at all. So while you do need to have your, your own income, and you will, and that is going to help you to be more fulfilled as a person, at the same time, they're saying to not really think, think of it in that way so much. Think about just, in general, your fulfillment. What is going to fulfill you? What, what are your needs? What is going to fulfill those needs? And I feel like spirituality is definitely a need for you. So in the same way that your, your daughter, it's almost like her essence needs water. She needs to be around water. It feels the same way for you, but it does feel like with, with spirituality or, or a spiritual calling that you have. So if her calling is to be in the water, um, then she isn't going to feel fulfilled by something else. She's not going to feel really um, in her highest, best, most optimal state, even in a sense kind of primal or instinctual state, her most natural state, in other words. Um, if she's not doing that, if she's not scuba diving and splashing around in the water with the fish, you know, um, and so it feels like now th there is this Octurian energy though. Like if you're not engaging this more like Octurian type of, of side where you're healing others, you're teaching others, it doesn't feel like you're, you're going to be fulfilled as much. Now, obviously this can come out in a myriad of ways. It can come out as, as different things. Um, but I feel like it shouldn't be strictly non-spiritual. Um, it feels like this needs to be incorporated more. This other side of yourself that you haven't been letting out as much, that you've been kind of hiding more for a long time. Even to yourself, it feels like, um, in some cases, especially for like a certain time, like a certain amount of years. So it's good that you are engaging that more now because it feels like that's what's going to fulfill you. That's what you're going to be getting more out of. So you definitely need to be engaging with that, but at the same time, you still need to be fulfilling this other side of yourself that just feels like it, it wants to fulfill others, benefit others, be of service to others. And when you combine those things, that's really when it feels like you're going to be your happiest. Now, again, Octurus is not necessarily coming in as an origin, but I feel like for the purpose of, of career and what you're going through now, it's very important for your guides to highlight that. The two that are coming in the most strongly would be the Arcturian energies and then also the, the Syrian water energy. Sirius in general, I would say, but then also the, the water energies are coming in more prominently. So I feel like either of those could be could be the the origin. In some ways, I'm leaning a little bit more towards Sirius and, and the water. But again, I feel like I feel like your guides are letting that be for, for a time. So you can know that it's one of these two. Um, but I feel like they're almost letting that be for a time just because they want you to give your your attention um, still to this. Arcturian energy where you have had a lot of lives there and this is very important for you to to look at as well as this the Syrian water energy so both are important but I feel like with your this career stuff right now you need to be really incorporating these Arcturian energies um, regardless of the origin that's something that's that's really important and there is definitely a strong resonance there, and you have had a lot of lifetimes there. 
but for your fulfillment, this healing and, and teaching kind of, kind of energy, also empathy for others, um, this really needs to, to be engaged. That brings me to another thing, um, which is, this is something that actually came up a, a while before, and I'm just being reminded of it again. Part of the reason I feel like even that you sleep is actually an empathic thing, where you're picking up on a lot of um, different energies from a lot of different people. Um, and if you don't have sort of the, the opportunity, if you don't have access to kind of letting that go somewhere, um, then that can drain you. So that's another reason why it's really important to not only be working on your chakras, making sure that those are, um, making sure that those are aligned and those are, are working optimally, especially ones that you feel, um, like if once you do a little research on the different ones, especially the ones that you feel according to, to your life in different areas that, that you can see where you might have um, different issues in different areas or different strengths in different areas, then you can kind of get an idea of what chakras might be the most out of alignment. And you can especially focus on working on those. And again, wearing the, the rose quartz is really good. But along with that, it feels like as you're doing something to be healing others, teaching others, and, and kind of helping them to, to heal themselves and know how to do that, you are going to have more energy yourself. You're going to be less drained, which is ironic because some people... Um, if they were helping other people through some type of, of healing that the person needed to go through, a lot of times the person would feel more drained. Um, but again, if that's really your calling and specifically what you need to be doing in your lifetime, then you're actually going to feel more energized by it. And your, you know, your self, your soul, and your energy, your chakras, and everything, they're going to flow more, and that's going to be more the way that they would respond to that. Versus feeling drained. So it will actually do the opposite. It will actually heal you and benefit you um, to benefit others in that way, to help heal others in that way. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do some clearing here. Let me see. Okay, so I'm going to use my lapis lazuli. You might hear my baby crying a little bit on the on the recording. I don't know. Sometimes it gets rid of different sounds, but I think some are probably louder than others. Maybe even like younger people, it even feels like. But at the same time, there's a feeling of not exactly wanting to, to limit what, what you might do. So I also 
feel like really follow your intuition with it. Now, some of this though is going to come um, innately to you. A lot of this will come innately to you. So you're not, you're definitely not going to need a diploma um, for whatever it is that, that you decide on and that you're going to be doing. Um, and I feel like people are going to resonate with you and, and they're going to come to you because they, they resonate with you. And this is kind of something that will start a little bit on the side, I feel like. And then it, it will increase as, as time moves on. Because it also feels like more people will um, learn about you and know what it is that you're doing. But I feel like once you start doing this, I feel like a lot of this is just going to come naturally. And there's also a feeling like naturals are the best. You really don't need, unless you're feeling intuitively to, to go somewhere to increase what you naturally have, that's fine. But even if you do something like that, I still feel like that would be um, temporary. So even if you were to get a certificate in something, I feel like it would be kind of fast. Um, you would learn something really, really quickly. Um, or maybe you wouldn't even get a certificate. If you did, like, um, if you did go into something, maybe you, maybe you, maybe you learn something somewhere, but it's like over a weekend or a week or something. It doesn't feel like a diploma, like from a college or something like that. And again, that's your choice. If you feel to, to do that or not, sometimes that can definitely enhance something. So it just feels like what you resonate with, but I definitely don't feel like you're going to need like years of, of schooling um, to do this uh, thing that your guides are talking about and, and that your intuition is going to tell you because this does feel innate and, and it feels like it's part of your soul's calling. You're going to naturally know how to do it even if it's brand new to you. And if you do feel to go somewhere to get some kind of schooling or, or learn something again. This would be very temporary. It would be a really temporary course or seminars or something like that. It would be, or seminar even, it doesn't have to be plural. So this could be something really, really temporary. It could even be multiple things if you wanted, but again, they would, they would be very short. If you if you were to do that, so that's an if that that depends on whether or not you resonate with doing that. Okay, so I'm going to do some more clearing with my citrine here. Oh, another thing I forgot to say is there's been at least one lifetime in ancient Egypt. That's That was another thing that was coming in, which I don't think I mentioned. And in this lifetime, you've definitely, you definitely learned some spiritual things as well. You were definitely following some type of spiritual teachings or practices. And you had some knowledge that you gained about those things, those understandings that they had back then. So that as well, that's coming into play a bit here also. Thank you. 
Okay, so I'll just finish off with the clearing with my rose quartz here. So I should mention too that this is a very healing stone as well. It's really good for empathy. It's really good for healers, teachers as well. This is um, definitely a stone that resonates with those energies, healer, teacher, empath. So there's a lot of kind of gentler energies that, that come in with rose quartz and it definitely healing, definitely healing is a strong energy with the rose quartz. So that's part of the reason as well that they would want you to wear it. Okay. So thank you very much. That is the end of this reading. Thank you very much for allowing me to do this reading for you. And I truly hope that it benefits you. Thank you very much. Namaste.